Hi, this is Wayne Shorter, and you're watching First Look. Hello, I'm Don Woz, the president of Blue Note Records, welcoming you to a very special edition of First Look. Joining us today is an artist whose musical mastery and whose vision have made him a legendary global hero, and that's an understatement, too. The great Mr. Wayne Shorter. Maestro, thanks for being here. It's really good to see you. Thank you very much. <laughs> good to see you, too. And, but the, the, there's so much to ask you about. Uh, but we're going to limit the scope of my questions today to the release of the new Blue Note album, Art Blakey, First Flight to Tokyo, The Lost 1961 Recordings. And for those of you watching who don't know about this, in 1961, Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers were among the very first American jazz musicians to perform in Japan. And their reception was something akin to Beatlemania. <laughs> and over the years, the tour has taken on an almost mythological quality. And the record producer, Zev Feldman, has now uncovered a previously unreleased recording of the band's Tokyo concert at Hibuya Public Hall in January of 1961. And the music lives up to the legend surrounding that tour. And of course, Mr. Wayne Shorter was a pivotal member of that band. Maestro, can we, can we talk about your experiences with Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers? I'm wondering how, how you ended up in the band in the first place. Well, you know, I was uh, working, uh, I was working with the Maynard Ferguson band, big band. Uh, I was with them for about three or four weeks. And um, I heard that, I didn't know this, but I was told that Art Blakey heard about me through Lee Morgan and, and because Lee Morgan would come to my uh, Newark, New Jersey and, and play on Monday night sometimes with John Coltrane. And he, he called me at midnight one time and said, we're gonna play a couple of songs. Can you, can you get over here fast? So I went over there, you know, he wanted, he heard about me, Lee heard about me and wanted, you know, so I went over there and played the last song with them, which was Night in Tunisia. Then what happened next was Man Up Ferguson's band was playing in a, Canada, we were playing at the Canadian Exposition, mm -hmm. and Lee Morgan, Art Blakey, the Messengers, Count Basie, Sarah Vaughn, they were all there, you know, and um, the big race uh, race track. And I was all, off for that night, just sitting with the audience and some man, other band members, and here comes at the nighttime show Lee Morgan running across the track, race road. And he comes up to me and he says, uh, do you want to be in the messengers? <laughs> and I said, yeah. He said, come on with me. So I went and ran into his, uh, uh, the dressing room. And Art Blakey was in the dressing room. And he was saying, do you want to be with the messenger? <laughs> <laughs> he, he never really heard me. He just, because he always said Lee Morgan was the apple of his eye. When you first got in Art's band, There'd been a, a series of amazing saxophone players who had, you know, preceded you in, in, in the group. Did you worry about fitting in or what would be expected of you? Our motto was always get someone who can write, who can compose. After Benny Golson left, you know, I knew it was going to be a challenge, you know, because Benny wrote some nice stuff. And then we started rehearsing a little bit here and there. And Art never never uh, hounded, you know, like the demanded, we, this doesn't sound right. Maybe we gotta get something, better. we gotta get something that's more dynamic. Then I, I knew he got that listening training playing with Thelonious Monk. This Monk played odd stuff. And I, and I, was, I heard, uh, I, I knew that Art was the only drummer who had that drive that, that matched what Monk was doing. And uh, that, Miles Davis said that too. He said, Art is, is one of the hippest, he has the hippest beat drums and sound along with uh, Kenny Clark. Were you surprised at the, at the reception American jazz got in Japan, even, yeah. even compared to in this country? Yeah, it was like the, almost like overwhelming. 
because we thought we were cool anyway. You're getting off the plane and, and, we, and in the airport, all of a sudden, all these lights and the photographers and people man, and the presence, they had all these packages and and it would say a dozo, handing a dozo, dozo, please, please, dozo. <laughs> and Lee Morgan said, I don't have no more room. The first interview, they asked us, they kept asking us, what is originality? And why are you here? And we just thought, well, the promoters got us here, the promoters and the people in Japan I really wanted to see what this uh, they 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 would see they would wanted to witness something authentic. And that, that word authentic came out as the, during the conversation. Or, and what is originality? So we went there, and uh, knowing that no other jazz group has gone. But here's the thing: when we left Japan. I'm not skipping being in it. We went to Japan maybe two times. I didn't know that art would stay stay behind and come back later. I didn't know what it, it took me years to find out that he stayed behind because he was working with young children. They they called it the drum and fife corps. And in the Japanese, they call it koteki tai. And they were Buddhists. And art would be playing with them working with them, showing them, teaching them. And he stayed a couple of days more to do that, you know, not, not only to, to go to the Yamaha factory and get a drum set for free. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about some of the guys who were in the band with you. Uh, Lee Morgan got you into the band, but what was your relationship like with him on stage and uh, off stage? Well, Lee and I, we went to Paris. Lee, there's a picture, you don't see it now. Lee picked out a, a, a cool jacket for me to wear. He said, yeah, Wayne, that's you. And, and on the Sean Zilla day, hey, man, that, that jacket is you. <laughs> and we, we talked politics back and forth. You're talking about the Jomo Kenyatta and the, the Africans plane crash. They were some leaders in the Congo, whatever. And this, the, we talk about stuff like that, and and uh, we have uh, differences. Also, Bobby Timmons, Bobby Timmons wasn't wasn't really quiet, but he 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 had that hit song "A Moan," and and Art used to say uh, when we started buying, getting uniforms and everything, and Art said, "We want you all to look sharp." Not, not that he didn't want Bobby to be the only one to be sharp because he made he's making publishing money. He said, but I think that none of the messengers, none of us should be walking around with less than three hundred dollars in our pocket. <laughs> <laughs> and we got these continental suits. We all went and got fitted, and those uh, Cuban heels shoes with the Cuban heels, and we were we were like a team. And and having fun. Oh man! Well, you you mentioned Bobby Timmons. You guys did an incredible version of Monin uh, in that that Tokyo concert. Let let's play a little bit of that for a second. Okay. <laughs> That's Art Blakey from the album First Flight to Tokyo, the lost 1961 recordings, a song called Monin. The concert started with an, an, a great drum solo that led into Now's the Time, which, which is just such a powerful thing, especially you you come in blazing on that. It's, re, it's a very exciting moment. You can really okay. feel the energy in the hall. Do you remember playing it? No. <laughs> Let's listen to a little bit of it. Thank you. 
That's Now's the Time from the newly discovered Art Blakey album, First Flight to Tokyo, the lost 1961 recordings. Do you, can you remember the actual concert in Tokyo? I, I do remember doing it, but the particulars, I, I remember trying to keep my best foot forward. And I think I got um, some good training from being in the army and uh, the team, the teamwork thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, thinking of the person next to you, the thinking of the people you're playing with and not just yourself, like using, try to, I'm gonna use the messengers as a stepping stone, that kind of thing. That, that never was like, we, we were like, messing, we're gonna go down with the ship. If we're gonna sink, we all sink. I think that the uh, the teamwork aspect of the messengers is is really on display well in uh, Night in Tunisia. Did a great version of it that night. Let, should we play a little bit of it? Yeah. Yeah, good. I think I'm playing the claves. <laughs> Uh, Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers with Wayne Shorter from the album First Flight to Tokyo, the lost 1961 recordings as a night in Tunisia. Well, well, Maestro, I, I really appreciate you taking the time today and talking with us about this record. It's a beautiful album. Uh, I know I know people are going to like it. I think it's one of the, the finest things that Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers ever uh, ever recorded. Oh, yeah. and, uh, and it's always good to see you, man. Okay, good to see you. All right, thanks so much, and thank you all for watching First Look. Okay. If you enjoyed First Look and would like to see more, please hit the subscribe button and also click the bell icon. That way you'll be notified when we post our next video.